Okay, so now we have our data in the right format. We're ready to start actually building our first models. I know it took a while to get here, but a lot of the stuff we did before this is actually gonna be very useful uh, when working with a lot of other data sets. So here's what we're gonna do. So there is a function, as we talked about, called KNN, right? K nearest neighbors, and it's in the class um, library. You can see that right here, right? Um, and if you look down, it basically says, I want a training data set, I want a test data set, um, I can do, you know, I can have some factor, the true classifications, that's, it's a little tricky, but we could talk about that. I can get that K value, which is how many neighbors to consider. You can have something like a minimum vote, right? So you could say that, like, if there's less than K minus L dissenting votes, then, you know, it doesn't decide. Um, you can look at a proportion, right? Um, different things that you can look at. And there's always some great examples down here. The better they use the IRIS data set, which is a very popular data set that's built into R, right? Um, so in this case, right, we're going to say predict KNN, which is our prediction, right, is going to be equal to the numerical training data. So if you look back up at the top, right, um, train test. Um, the columns one through three, which is just the, the features, right? Not the output column. And um, the testing data is going to be the testing data, columns one through three. And then the train, and then the, um, the label training data, right? Is going to be the, um, the column four, which is the factor of the true classifications of the training set, right? So that's, that's what we want as as that output and k equals one, right? So that's the only thing we have uh, to do to set that up. So we can run this, right? And it sits there and it takes a little while, right? Uh, but it eventually develops a the, the prediction model. Um, and we can then look at what that prediction model looks like. And, um, you know, as a summary, it kind of gives us the output of the testing data, right? So test numerical testing data. So it, it doesn't know what the answer is, right? And we never gave it the answer for the testing data. So it's predicting that 12,000 of the testing data are going to be no's and uh, 1,258 are going to be yeses. But obviously we actually know the answers because we actually have that data. So we can build a table that compares the prediction of the KNN to the actual testing data. And what this table is going to do is now show us what we got right and wrong, right? And so the table says that the, um, so it got 9,492 no's right because it's the same in both the rows and the columns, right? And they got um, 635 yeses right, but it got these numbers wrong because they're off column, right? Meaning that the prediction um, said no and the actual result was yes or the prediction said yes and the actual result was no and I always this is where I always have to take a step back because I have to remember which one's a row and which one's a column right um, and if I remember correctly right um, we can we can always find this out because we can see in the testing data how many y's we have so we can say string y equals uh, let's see what's the String y equals oops, equals no, All right? So we want to count the number of rows where in the testing data the string y equals no. Right? Uh, oh, you know, could actually give it the actual data frame to look at. Forgot that. All right? So it's one thousand one hundred fifteen. Right, so um, the what that means, right? So since this column is way past, since this row is way past one thousand one hundred fifteen, this must be what the prediction is, and that's that's correct because the label always goes here. I always forget that, right? So essentially, these no's are the ones predicted by the model, and these yeses are the ones predicted by the models. These are the ones that are the actual truth. The columns are the actual truth because we did prediction for rows and then columns, right? Because it's always row ordered. So what that means is that we had 9,492 correct no predictions, 635 correct yes predictions, right? But we had 2,814 uh, false negatives. In other words, the model predicted a no, but the answer was yes. 
and we had 623 false positives where we predicted a yes and the answer was no, right? So K and N of one, you know, it seems like it does decent. It's not great, but it definitely does okay, right? And so we can go and try to figure out, besides just looking at something like its accuracy or something like that, we can start to go look at more in-depth numbers. So the next two lines, three lines here, are simply just counting up how many times we predicted a yes and how many times we predict, sorry, how many times it actually was an a yes, how many times it actually was a no, just so we can start to calculate st some statistics. So we're gonna take this table that we created for the KNN of one, right? And we're going to use the two comma two row, which is down here, which is the true positive rate and we are true positive amount, right? And we can divide by the actual number of true positives, right? To give us the true positive rate. And so we get a true positive rate of 0.18, which means that out of all the positive, true positive we could have predicted, the KNN of one generated a true positive of a point, uh, about, got about 18% of the right. We can look at the true negative rate. Now the true negative rate, it did much better on, right? So. Um, it was about 93.8%, right? So um, it did a very good job of predicting negatives correctly, right? And so this is recall, true positive rate, right? And true negative rate is specificity. And then we can look at precision, right? And precision is out of all of the, um, uh, sorry, precision is out of all the things that we predicted to be positive that we got right. Uh, out of all the things that we could have predicted to be positive, how many did we get right? And we were right about 50% of the time. So this this is a measure of the precision of the model. The recall is out of all the things we could have said were positive, how many did we get right? right? And then finally, you know, the number that a lot of people actually use is accuracy. But as I mentioned before, accuracy is a little distorting because it's affected by um, the fact that we don't have a lot of yeses, right? So if we just predict no for everything in this model, right, we would do fairly well. That would be our number of, oh, now let's click up here. The number of Y's divided, sorry, the number of N's divided by the number of Y's plus the number of N's, right? So if, um, ooh, did something wrong there. Oh, I got, that's right, got to do my order of operations correctly. Um, so if we had just predicted no for everything, we would have been right 74.5% of the time, right? The KNN model was only right 74.6% of the time. So it's better than, than um, just predicting no for everything, but it's still not great. And this is why accuracy is a, is a misleading statistics because it doesn't take into account uh, the actual how, how many no's and yeses there are. Okay. So um, we can now go and make our model better. So in this model, we're gonna do the same thing again, but now we're gonna set K equals to 10, right? Um, and we can kind of run the model. And you know, it's not obvious that it's doing any better right off the bat. Maybe there's less of these off diagonals, which are the false positives, false negatives, but it's not 100% clear. So let's run our statistics. Right, and we can see that the true positive rate has probably gone down actually, if anything, a little bit. Right, the true negative rate has gone up, right, a little bit, which is great. Um, and the precision has gone up a little bit, yes, it has. And the accuracy has actually, in the end gone down a little bit, right? Because the accuracy of the original model was 0.746. Oh, no, it went up. It went up a, just a little bit to 0.754, right? So even with 10 neighbors, we're not doing a great job, especially since, as we mentioned before, if you were to just say everything is a no, right, you'd be right 74.5% of the time, right? Uh, so that is K nearest neighbors. It's not the best approach, as you can see. Uh, but sometimes it's worth trying out just to see if it'll work for your particular data. Um, especially if you can map the data correctly, it will work pretty well. Thanks. And in the next talk, we're going to talk a little bit about logistic and SVMs.